people and welcome to a quick unit on topic 3.1 for our ESS class uh, looking at biodiversity. So here's an image of the world in monthly time lapse over many many years. You can get images like this on nasa.gov and it shows the life changing on this planet significantly depending on the season, the time of the year, uh, the, the different year, and the green represents a lot of uh, plants and white represents ice and you see biodiversity in the oceans and on land as well and we'll talk about that. So cut right to it we'll look at what is biodiversity and a quick simple answer to that is the variety of all life on earth. In this section of the um, of our course we're going to look at genetic diversity, species diversity, and habitat diversity and those are coming up soon. So these are the key factors that affect uh, biodiversity. You have climate, which is essentially weather over the long term. Um, the age of the different habitat, the older these places, sometimes you have more time for soil to accumulate and soil can provide a lot of nutrient for trees and those things. Um, the stability of the habitat, more stable it is, the longer things can live there and evolve and change over time. So maybe you get more biodiversity there. The range of habitats, if you have a river valley and a mountain and a forest, uh, you have different things that can live in those different habitats, more biodiversity. Um, and connections, if you have corridors between two uh, very diverse places, you can have migration and then you can increase the biodiversity that way because uh, a lot of genes can be passed down for longer and longer and more sustained uh, evolving and growing and changing over time can take place. Why does biodiversity matter? I thought this video did a great job at summing this up. So I'm going to add this link in the description below. Uh, but for those of you who don't really have the time and you want the quick answer to this question, well, I'll, I'll pull the answers out. So why does it matter? Well, the Lorax generally has all the answers right here. Uh, but Overall, when we look at the, the biggest answer is resilience, probably, and we can withstand if the more the more diversity you have in a species, the more chances of withstanding a big hit to your species. Uh, look at coronavirus, for example. Um, guaranteed, there's people out there who are totally immune, and some people even were asymptomatic to coronavirus. There's something in their genes that's making that happen, and. The more you have out there, the more diversity you have out there, the more chances you have in your population to withstand big things that try to hit your population. There's also the more diversity in an ecosystem around me, the more diversity out there, the more types of food chains we can have, so the more types of animals can live in there and eat different things and not interfere with each other. Um, there's intrinsic value to biodiversity, and we'll actually get into what intrinsic value is later in this course, but your appreciation of being in nature is a part of that. Um, natural capital, we'll also get into that a bit later when we talk about goods and services of different things that are around, the different diverse things that can grow up around you. And there's a lot of things out there that are undiscovered. A lot of medicines that we've found uh, have come from plants in rainforests that have been refined and um, converted into medicines that are quite popular out there. Uh, chloroquine is an interesting example if you want to look one up. This person here, uh, Willie Smits, shares an amazing TED talk and I really encourage you to watch this. I'll put the link below. Uh, he's taken a decimated piece of the planet and converted it back into a healthy, vibrant uh, ecosystem and he's bringing orangutans back to their uh, home area before humans wiped it out to create palm oil plantations. So it's amazing TED talk. It's quite impassioned and you should have a look at it. So on to the three types of diversity that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, there's genetic diversity, which we've mentioned a little bit now. The genes uh, that are different between me and the next person and the next person and the next person will enable us to withstand different things different uh, hits to our population. So more genetic diversity, a more chance you can evolve to be stronger as a species. And species diversity, well that's really looking at the richness and the evenness of the species. So here I am in a windy forest today and uh, I could look at the richness, the different kinds of trees. How many different kinds of trees do I have here? 
And how many of each of those kinds of trees do I see around me? If I see many different kinds, many different species, that's a good sign, it's, it's quite diverse. Um, but that's not the only sign, is how many of each of those kinds of trees, if I have a lot of each different kind, extremely diverse place. Maybe I just got lucky and have one of this rare species, but then most of them are these uh, white birch trees around me. That's not as diverse. Okay, have a look at the video that I share. Uh, if you're interested in calculating biodiversity for a lab, Simpson's Biodiversity Index is amazing. And I put a whole video on how to do that and uh, look in the description for that video. The third type of diversity that we were focusing on uh, is habitat diversity. And, and that's pretty easy to understand, I think. It's the different types of habitats in a given area. So uh, this picture is a, is a nice one. For example, this is in Mikumi, Tanzania. Um, you can see a grassland, you can see a woodland, you can see some uh, montane forests up above. So a few different types of habitats going into that. Maybe there's some riverine valleys. There's a key to this. Uh, this quote here is, is pretty important. Um, and it discusses the idea or explores the idea that future evolution of plants is we're really threatening our existence by reducing the habitats and not allowing plants to evolve on this planet because plants are the food source for everything above them in the food chain, right? And, the ha and even the food source and the habitat for a lot of different insects and uh, things out there. So habitat diversity in a nutshell. One thing about habitat diversity is we could look at two, two very different groups for habitat diversity. We could talk about terrestrial habitats, land, and marine habitats, water. Um, the key for terrestrial habitats is the abiotic factors. So those are things like the sunlight I'm feeling right now, heat, wind, um, the soil types. Those will influence plants, 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 plants. And whatever types of plants you can get determine what kind of animals will come into that area. Whereas in marine habitats, abiotic factors um, which I have a long list of them here. Think about acidity in the oceans, um, which can be affected by how much carbon is going into those oceans, can be affected by the temperature. Um, salinity is also affected by the ocean currents and temperature and depth. Those things significantly affect everything in that area. So plants, animals, whatever is in that area. So see the difference? Terrestrial, the abiotic factors, affect the plants. The plants then affect the animals, uh, determine what animals are there, the diversity. Whereas in marine habitats, abiotic factors uh, really influence everything, the whole, the whole range, the whole gamut, the plants, the animals, right away. Now to quickly summarize in one slide, I should have told you this was coming at the beginning and you could have skipped right to this. Um, there's a nice quick summary slide. And that will wrap it up for uh, 3.1.1, looking at uh, biodiversity and diversity at three different levels here. Okay, I hope that helped, and we'll see you next time. Bye.